Falzone, and this is 4 for 4 SciTech, where we discuss four cutting edge, wildly cool SciTech topics, so buckle up. Space Station astronauts make history by eating first space grown veggies. Tell us about these space grown veggies, and are they going to be available at a grocery store soon? The short answer is no. What? But they're still very cool. Yeah. The whole idea that we've got the first vegetables grown in space, in this case, red romaine lettuce, which I've been known to eat on occasion myself. And yeah, you know, astronauts in the International Space Station grew it, and they were able to sample it this week. They enjoyed it. But this is part of a much bigger issue about getting people to Mars. Hey, astronauts need their veggies too. They've come a long way from those food tubes. These days I hear they're eating ice cream and shrimp cocktail. I almost want to be an astronaut for the food, maybe. But it's, you know, <laughs> but it's, it's a long-term thing though. The whole idea that they've got to grow their own food, which is going to last them on much, much longer missions than we're seeing at the mm -hmm. moment. Congratulations to them though. I couldn't even grow basil in my New York City apartment. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of pathetic. But I think also the science behind this is really amazing. You need the right uh, temperature, you need the yeah. right light, you need the right water that has a ground gravitational pool. Pretty incredible that now next up is potatoes and tomatoes. Let's see, let's grab some popcorn and watch it play out. Absolutely. No, it is absolutely an incredible finding. And we've seen that that space food is actually quite delicious. Anyone that's had space ice cream. So I'm hoping that maybe we'll get to sample some of that veggie -ness from space. A Facebook insult lands a Thai man in prison for 30 years. Katie, what is this all about? So Donald Trump might not do well in Thailand. Apparently, <laughs> nope. yes, someone criticized the government there and he got in a lot of trouble. This would probably qualify as cruel and unusual punishment in this country as much as I'd like to send my Twitter trolls there. Mm. I think, I mean, I think it was specifically, was it the royal family that yeah. was kind of the, you know, that was the target of this insult? I mean, I think it just goes to show that, you know, once you kind of leave the United States, if you're in some of these other countries, you know, you've got to be very careful about what you do in social media. I think there was a case where an Australian woman was deported from the UAE for a Facebook post recently. So yeah, you know, the kind of, there are different waters in different parts of the world. I mirror that 100% too. And you know, especially as being an international reporter, when you are in someone else's territory, you better know those rules. And if you insult the monarchy in the wrong place, that could be 15, 30, 60 years in prison. And by the way, if you're media, the way, even if reporting on it, you better be careful about how you're stating it because that could lead you in jail as well. Oh, and we've seen this happen before. And like you said, this was a monarchy rule. This wasn't something where he was just making fun of somebody on Twitter. It was directly aimed at the monarchy. And originally, I think he was supposed to get something like 60, 60 years, years and they yeah. cut his sentence in half. So it's pretty crazy out there. Bill Nye's mom was a badass World War II code breaker. What's the story behind this, James, and why is he telling us about it now? There's loads of buzz about this at the moment. Basically, there's going to be an upcoming documentary about Bill Nye, and basically there's a snippet there where he talks about his mother's role in World War II. She mm -hmm. was in the Navy, something of a math whiz, was involved in breaking the Enigma code, apparently. So, yeah, you know, I'm not surprised that, like, Bill Nye had an amazing mother. And, like, and yeah, I think it's really interesting that we're talking about it now because there's just so much buzz around STEM and getting women right. in science. I think it's awesome. I like that he called her Rosie the code breaker instead yeah, of yeah. Rosie the Riveter, although he did say that he hopes that women will take over 50% of the science positions. Yeah, and yeah. I think as long as there's no discrimination, I'm okay with people choosing their own profession, whether it be science or something else. Mm -hmm. Talk about a woman ahead of her time, too. You yeah. know, to your point, getting more females involved in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. This is how you tell them that you can, they can do. They can be code breakers in the Navy. It doesn't get more badass than that. What a great example of an awesome female in technology. Absolutely. And I'm happy that he's talking about this because we, these are unsung heroes of the war yeah. that we haven't heard about. So he's giving and shedding light onto these really amazing women that this code breaking helped to cut the war in half. At least that's what they're saying. This has to be one of the least desirable researcher jobs that I've ever heard of, collecting whale snot. Oof. But now drones are doing it. Katie, is this the one time we should be happy that bots are taking over our menial tasks? Well, this is very cool. So the spray that actually comes out of a whale's blowhole, it's very hard to obtain, but it's full of DNA and bacteria and lots of information about whales. But obviously for an underwater mammal that's about 400 pounds at minimum, mm -hmm. it's very hard to get. So now drones are actually flying in there, not only getting high-res imagery of whales, they're also collecting the data which scientists are scrambling for. So I think this is another really cool use of drone technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm up for this. I would go and do this job. I think it's fascinating. It's a cool <laughs> Really? I, no, I'm, I'm actually... You with, like, scuba gear <laughs> no, going I, in. 
<laughs> I'm a new dad. I'm covered in all sorts of disgusting <laughs> stuff all the time. So like, this is nothing to me. But no, I think like drones have really developed. Kind yeah. of science is now starting to use them in cool ways. I think this is really awesome. I didn't realize this was a job that needed to be done. But I'm wondering if they could also do the dishes and my laundry, yeah. any other undesirable chores. I'm happy for robots to take over those kind of jobs. Yeah, well, you know that's a downward slope. We've talked about this. They start <laughs> taking over everything and then they uprise. But here nor there. Now you know what we think. Tell us what you think with the hashtag 444SciTech. And we will see you there.